It's a time-honored tradition to create a Christmas-themed story in every medium. Comic books are no exception. There are plenty of great examples of comic book stories that use the holiday season to tell us something new about the characters and how they react to a unique time of year. Some are hopeful, some help examine the stresses of the holiday, and still others examine the mythology and history behind the season. And then there are the comics where the hero is raped by Krampus and a lot of children are killed. Trigger warning, we're going to be reviewing Tarot, Black Rose of the Witch, number 84, a Christmas issue ostensibly. I was planning on doing a top 10 worst Christmas comics, but this issue of Tarot was so bad, it just didn't belong in the same list as the Sleepwalker Holiday Special. So, without further ado, let's first list the tropes that you could expect to reasonably find in any given issue of Tarot, Black Witch of the Rose. Tarot monologues to herself. Tarot's boyfriend is in trouble and needs to be rescued. Tarot's clothes fall off in battle. Monsters based off of all sorts of mythology. Pages without panels. Women are tied up and put in a cage. Romance novel style prose. Sex. The hero fails. That may not be too many tropes, but the ones that they have, you can count on. Everybody loses their clothes and often has sex in this comic. That's what it is. That's all it is, in a way. But you know what? For every trope we come across, I'm going to donate a toy to Toys for Tots. Let's do something positive and cheerful this holiday season that everybody can get along with. All right, brace yourselves, because this comic is completely bonkers. We begin with a splash page of a letter. Not the most dynamic visual, but bear with us. And Taro is monologuing about what the letter says. It's a letter from a girl named Nora in Austria asking Taro, a witch, to come help her. She's afraid that the Krampus will come and take her away. By the way, that style of the monologue prose just being laid down, yeah, they never put that in caption boxes. The lettering style in this is very different from a lot of comics that you're used to. They just put words... In this case, it's over black, but you'll see in coming pages, they just put it over the artwork. But they don't want to use caption boxes. Anyway, so, yeah, Taro, somehow, even though she's supposed to be, like, a witch that's constantly being hunted by evil forces, this girl has a way of getting this letter to her, and it's not explained how. Taro just says, oh, it's good that some kids still know how to use the old ways to get this to me. Okay, we'll fit this guy up here, monologue. Now we get a page of Taro reading that letter and suiting up, although I say suiting up semi-ironically because all she really wears is the tiniest of bikinis and a cape. I like that Taro wonders if the Krampus really exists. This is a person who's gone up against goblins, fairies, werewolves, vampires, all sorts of monsters, and she's like, could a Krampus really exist? Well, yes, Taro, there is a Krampus. A page without panels. Yeah, believe it or not, there are not three tarots just hovering in space. There's just one. It's just that artist and writer Jim Balint, he doesn't really like to draw panels dividing one moment to the next. He likes doing pinups. And you know what? It's a self-published comic, so he can do whatever he wants. Uh, I think that it doesn't help the storytelling, but I'm biased. Uh-oh, some of that romance-style prose. She says that she better increase her warming spell because Austria, this time of year, could make it colder than a witch's tit. I guess that's supposed to be clever. Comes off as a little, like, awkwardly clunky, like a lot of cheesy romance novels. Just my opinion. But we're going to put it up there because, hey, it's another toy for a kid. Taro simply teleports to Austria. There's not really any sort of magical energy or cloud of smoke or anything. She's just all of a sudden standing in Austria. So there is no time wasted. She gets the letter. She instantly teleports to Austria. Remember that because it's going to be a plot point later. There's a crowd of people out and about, but they don't necessarily seem to be doing anything in particular, as in there's no parade or anything, and Tara's wondering why they're there. She, she senses some vague magic in the air. And then look, the Krampus appears. And I'll give Jim Balant this. I think his drawing of the Krampus looks really cool. It's actually at least three Krampuses. There's, there's several of them. 
so this is the monster based on, uh, you know, Krampusnacht, which is a uh, sort of a Bavarian type of mythology. Um, I'm not an expert. If you want to look it up, though, uh, Benito Serino has written a lot of great little online comics about the history of Krampus. A lot of them are illustrated by a great artist named Chuck Kinnigy. They're really, really cool. Uh, essentially, uh, Krampus used to be a little bit the opposite of Santa, as in he would punish children. However, uh, as Benito explained it to me, thinking of him like a villain is more like thinking of Superman as Santa and Batman as Krampus. Like, you know, they're, they're opposites, but they sort of have the same goal of delivering, you know, Christmas. Like, one rewards, one punishes. But a lot of mythology these days sort of turn Krampus a little further. They take him further, and he's a flat-out monster, a killing machine. The Krampuses grab some children from the crowd, and no one does anything to stop them. Now, fair enough, look. They come into town and they, they somehow have magical powers to hypnotize people. That's scary and, and believable within the, the context of a, of a supernatural comic. But you'd think that maybe like two months down the road, come February, some parents might be like, Oh yeah, that's right, I used to have children. Uh, oh, they, they went missing when that monster grabbed them. Or, if they can't remember that, they'd at least be like, Hi, police! Um, yeah, I think my child's been murdered. But apparently nobody's ever been doing that in this town. Uh, beyond simply abducting children, the Krampuses also molest random women. But don't worry, they've all got big boobs. Monster mythology, though. We've got Krampuses. That's definitely in keeping with what Tarot is, so we'll hang this one up. And that's another toy for a kid. I'm gonna put this... I... Right there. So Tarot just keeps watching this. No one's reacting to the Krampuses. No one's reacting to Tarot just standing around in a bikini in the snow. And she's just watching it happen. And then she finally goes like, oh yeah, that's right, I came here to do something. She starts to cast a magical spell and then she thinks, you know what, I don't trust my magic right now. So even though she's a magic-powered superhero, she's not going to use any magic this issue. Finally, she takes out her sword and puts it up to one of the Krampuses, threatens him. It takes like five pages of them just talking and talking and talking for one of the Krampuses to finally explain what happened to Nora, the girl that Taro came there to save. They said they already drowned her before she arrived. Oh my god! That's right, Taro failed. She completely failed. Not only did she fail, but look at how fast she failed. She got the letter, she teleported right there, and she was still too late. Like, that is some really bad superheroing. I don't know what happened there, but she didn't even have a chance, did she? Taro cuts off one of the Krampus's arms, but there's no blood, and he's able to just reattach it. So these things are super powerful. I don't know how she plans to stop them. Maybe she should use some magic, but instead she starts getting hit with their... Uh, brooms, their switches, I don't know exactly what you call that, but, you know, just a bundle of sticks. They use that to, like, you know, in the mythology, uh, spank bad kids. Of course, she gets spanked, too. After about three pages, she starts getting into getting spanked. Maybe that's the Krampus magic. Uh, either way, she gets really into it, starts getting drunk, takes off her clothes, because of course she does, and starts drinking and dancing with them. And not just, like, dancing, but like line dancing, which kind of a weird choice. Clothes fall off. I mean, that's what the book is, right? I mean, you got, not only do you expect it, you'd probably be offended if you bought this book and that didn't happen, but that's their trope. Unfortunately, it's implied that she actually has sex with the Krampuses. Now she says that she did so willingly, but she was enchanted by them, wasn't she? So that's not consent. So that's actually pretty disgusting. That's pretty horrible. Uh, this comic used to like have plenty of sex, of course. People's clothes fall off, they have sex, whatever. But this is really crossing a line in my opinion. It's, it's horrible. Also, she wakes up in one of the Krampus's cages. So, bondage. Ugh, this is making me feel dirty. 
Taro breaks out of the cage and you're thinking, hey, finally, she's gonna give these Krampuses the business, right? She's gonna finally use her magical powers and, you know, get some revenge, save those kids. Because remember, they still have some kids in baskets that they're kidnapping. Well, guess what? No. Because apparently it hits midnight, it's the next day, and they fade away. And so Taro completely failed to save those kids. She just goes, well, maybe I'll save them next year. Next year? Oh my god, I don't know what's happening with this thing. I mean, this is not at all about the Christmas spirit in any way. I don't, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. How do you have a hero fail this badly with children? Oh, it's just ugly and mean-spirited. I'm sorry, but this does not put me in the Christmas mood. And I don't think it's going to put anybody in the horny mood either. Not when you've got, like, bestiality, rape, kids dying. I mean, who's turned on when those things are going on? Weirdos. Well, let's see how many tropes we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, well, you know what? Let's make some good out of this. That comic was utterly ridiculous, but we can at least have some fun by giving some toys to kids. Let's go put them in a bag, head on out, and uh, do something kind of nice for the holidays. All right. One, two, three. That one's pretty cool, right? Four, five, six, and seven. I don't know what else have I got here? That, eight. I'll just throw in a couple more just because they're little. So, there's that, and uh, just Homer. So it's all brand new, I hope the kids like it. All right, so, the toys going in. Merry Christmas. I hope you guys had fun looking at this ridiculous comic. I'm gonna be back next week with an actual good, goofy Christmas comic book. So until that time, keep reading comics. Mm -hmm.